When it comes to plants, you probably think you've seen it all, whether it's vegetables or flowers. Yeah, sure, there's sometimes like an odd colored flower that will come out, but for the most part, it all seems the same. Well, today's video, I'm actually going to give you five plants that you can grow in your garden here in a cooler climate. They're incredibly unique. I can guarantee you, you've never heard of before. And if you are, then you are in the depths of the internet when it comes to figuring out what to grow in your garden. And the reason why I'm giving this information to you so early is so you can source the seeds. Because they're rare, it's a little bit difficult to find the seeds. So this gives you lots of time to hunt them down. Or maybe you have a gardener in your life and you want to give them some really cool, unique seeds for uh, Christmas. This is a place to start. So I've got my mini Vigo garden bed thingy. Let's get into it. Because we're a channel that likes to take the science and apply it to the plants, let's also just first off start this video off with biodiversity and how it benefits plants. So Frontiers actually published a meta-analysis, which means a ton of studies were looked at and kind of put into summary. And what this specific journal in the Frontiers looked at was the biodiversity within the soil. So the more types or the, the greater the diversity in the types of plants you have in a space, the more diverse the microbial activity can be below the earth. And it can be quite drastic, up to 30% different than if you were to monocrop. So if you're ever looking for an excuse to spend a little bit of extra money on something unique, that would be it because you're doing it for Mother Nature. So first plant. If you've ever wondered what it's like to lick an electrical socket, this plant will give you that experience. It's called the electric daisy. Now, the first time I ever came into contact with one of these was actually via Arcopia. Jess, in particular, one of my friends, she gave me this plant, and it is called the electric daisy. The reason why it's called the electric daisy is because it gives your mouth kind of this tingling feeling and ultimately it numbs it. So if you've ever had like baby orgel, or if you've had like those sep sepulchral kind of halls lozenges for your mouth, this is that on steroids. It's also known as the toothache plant, and I could see why, because it definitely would eliminate any toothache potential. So other than it being an anesthetic, it also is an antibacterial and it has been looked at for some of its anti-inflammatory properties as well. It's incredibly easy to grow. You treat it like a marigold, literally. It's a unique looking plant to top it all off as well. So that's number one and probably one of my favorites. Okay, so plant number two is actually the Chinese red noodle bean. So yes, these are obscenely long, up to three feet in length, but they also have anthocyanins in them, which is what blueberries also have to help prevent against UV damage. Now, interestingly enough, if you've ever had, for example, string beans or bush beans that are purple or have kind of like a, a deeper color to them, when you actually cook with them, the color disappears. But with these red Chinese noodles, they the color can stay in a light steaming. So if you're ever looking for something colorful to eat that doesn't just simply wash away like a lot of the purple bush beans do, then this is definitely one you want to give a shot. Not only that, but the whole add the sign in thing being in a legume in and of itself is actually incredibly rare. And they do great in high heat. So if you've experienced runner beans or beans under an immense amount of stress doing a lot of wilting or stunted growth or lack of flowering, these guys can actually go up to my or plus 40 no questions asked. And not only that, if you trellis these or make a tunnel out of them, it can yield a pretty cool effect. So the next one actually is ice cream plant. More specifically, the blue java banana plant that is a banana plant that makes bananas that taste like ice cream. It is a very real thing. And here's the bonus to this. This is actually a frost tolerant version of the banana. So this frost tolerant variety is a hybrid that comes from Hawaii. So it's not naturally occurring. It is a hybrid. So something that's been bred for this specific characteristic. And it can go down to minus three degrees Celsius, which is huge. What makes this banana cold tolerant over your average banana plant 
actually comes down to a few factors. The pseudostem fibers are physically different than that of your regular banana is number one. So that means structurally, the cells don't simply just burst and go to mush. And there's a higher soluble sugar concentration. So this higher level of sugar obviously yields the tastier banana physically that you eat, but it also is kind of like the antifreeze going through the plumbing of the plant, which ultimately helps protect it when those temperatures do dip. So if you're in a cold climate and you actually want to grow these, you obviously need to take them inside during the winter and you don't actually, and if you've ever overwintered banana plants before, you don't have to physically keep the banana plant as a whole. You can lob it off right at the base and it will grow from that. Not to mention it will produce pups and baby banana plants over time. But once it begins to get reasonable outside, these guys can go outdoors. Remember, minus three, that is frost tolerant at its finest. I would personally grow them in a container. Now, there are some areas in Canada. There's one in particular I remember watching on CBC News years ago. It was a lady who actually grows banana plants all over her yard. I believe it was in Montreal. So there are areas in Canada that you could grow these banana plants outdoors, overwinter them physically outdoors with just a few precautions and, and steps that need to be taken. And you know, if you lived in Victoria, I could almost guarantee you'd be able to figure this out and find a way in which you could have these all year round and ultimately have a banana supply every, every summer. Okay, so the next one is indigo rose tomato. Now, this tomato has a rich science history behind it, which is kind of why it made this list. So it was bred specifically for its anthocyanins. So yes, the exact same stuff we were talking about with the Chinese noodle plant, and it was bred by Oregon State University. So these pigments, like I had mentioned before, help against UV protection. But in the case of this tomato, it actually gives two other benefits that are hugely important when it comes to feeding the world. Number one is it actually increases the shelf life of this plant. So meaning it can stay on your grocery store shelves for longer without any kind of wax or chemical being applied to it. And then it actually is disease resistant against some diseases, which is obviously important when it comes to growing the plants because our yields aren't affected, our crops aren't destroyed as easily compared to a regular tomato. A 2020 food chemistry study actually found that this tomato specifically had two times more anthocyanin concentration than just your regular tomato. Fun fact about this plant is you actually don't pick the fruit until the bottoms of the leaves turn bright red. And the reason for that is because once the leaves on the bottom are bright red, the physical fruit itself is at its peak sugar level, meaning its peak flavor and its peak anthocyanin and everything else. So that one is cool because of the science behind it. Not only that, but it's very unique looking. Okay, the next one is the snake gourd. Now, this isn't visually, it is bizarre looking, yes. But the visual portion of this is not why it made this list, oddly enough. So obviously, the physical gourd itself can get up to five feet in length. It twists, it turns, it curls, it does all these kind of cool designs, depending on environmentally what it's been exposed to. But the really, truly cool part about this plant is the chemistry. This plant specifically is rich in tri trichosanthin. Hopefully I said that correctly. But what that is, is it's a protein. And oddly enough, this protein specifically is being studied. There's no conclusive evidence of this yet. It's just being studied, which makes it cool in my mind because I'm one of those scientific rigor people that believe scientists should be thinking that anything's possible and exploring all possibilities, regardless of what's been published. So take that with what you will. But antiviral and anti-cancer properties, which I, again, yes, no, it's not published, 100%. That was very Canadian, the yes, no there. But I think it's kind of cool that it's even something that's like considered. Not only that, but they also have stems that are very unique to the rest of the plant world because of the sheer weight that these plants are able to hold. So kilograms on a single stem is a lot. Most plants can't achieve that. So physically, mechanically, Chemistry-wise, it's a very unique plant. I think it goes without saying that these five plants show us that gardening isn't just about 
gardening. It's about discovery at the same time. So do what I do every single year. Pick one of these plants to grow as your experiment plant. Put all your heart and soul into it. Don't commit to all five because you'll be cursing yourself by the end of the season. I can guarantee you that. But one or two, you should be okay. And it just helps put a little bit of pep in your step when it comes to gardening and make it less mundane. Now, if you're wondering what plants to grow for the benefits of a lower grocery bill or what plants not to grow because of a higher grocery bill, then these are the videos you want to check out here. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.